hockey. Yeah, yeah. My favorite. It's Judd's Hockey Show. And it's not just Judd's Hockey Show. It is the NHL trade deadline, two days off edition of Judd's Hockey Show. So we got the heavy hitters. We've got Jesse Pierce, Bar Down Beauties, of course. Find her latest podcast, I think, just posted yesterday. Also covers the wild for NHL.com. Declan Goff. And uh, we're going to talk trade deadline. We're going to talk potential extension, I guess, for a player. But before we do that, Jesse is wearing her, her varsity <laughs> letter jacket. So give us the lowdown on your club and one of the great weeks of the year, the State High School Hockey Tournament. God, it is such a good week. It's way better when your alma mater is in the tourney, too, as Matamidi has been. I don't want to start the discourse of they should move up to AA. No, they shouldn't. They are tiny, and they are just finding success now. Um, But I love it. It gives me an excuse to wear this jacket that my parents spent probably an absorbent amount of money on back in the day in high school. So it's an homage to them. And uh, it's actually, they're so warm. Like, I forgot how nice and warm these, these are nice jackets. It looks very nice. I'm really happy for you. I'm really happy for your team <laughs> being in the Class A tournament. Yeah. I'm sure Declan's ha- uh, just as happy. I'm he's actually, I, I'm fine with Matamida in Class A. I'm, okay. I'm fine with them being in Class A. I, I don't have too much of a gripe with that. They are smaller than all the other AA schools. This isn't, you know, like a Hermantown or a St. Thomas Academy, I really should say, situation. Oof, yeah. They, they, they belong in Class A. That's fine. And, uh, yeah, go Zeps. We'll see what happens. Go Zeps. Yeah, Class A is great. Class A is fantastic. Should probably you, you be played in a smaller... You yeah, should, should we play in a smaller rink? Should we play in a smaller <laughs> rink? Oh, God. I, you know oh, what? Okay. I'm, I'm done because then the parents are like, oh, can you say that about it? You know what? This guy grew up here one class. Well, I, I watched one them play one tournament. one tournament back one in the class day. One class tournament was so great, days. you know. God. Yeah, back, back in TV. my day, it was a yeah. real tur- a real champion. Rozo and Warroad both played up. Warroad's now in the class. Hey, I don't even want to get started. All right, we're going to talk <laughs> NHL trade deadline. Bill Guerin, the Wild uh, contract extension. But before we do that, Judd's Hockey Show today, sponsored by a new partner of ours, Nicolay Law, which knows that when you or a loved one gets injured ordinary life well it can come to a stop and things can get complicated during that time insurance companies are likely to pressure you they don't care if you get better they don't care if your medical bills are piling up and they don't care that you might not be able to work but you know who does nicolay law they have seen every play the insurance companies have that's right their playbook it's old school but nicolay law will drop their gloves to make sure that you get the compensation that you deserve after an accident so if you've been injured, get Minnesota's local award-winning injury lawyers. Get Nicolay. Start your path to winning at NicolayLaw.com or give them a call 1-855-NICOLAY. That is N-I-C-O-L-E-T-Law.com. Check them out. We appreciate them sponsoring Judd's Hockey Show. All right, we are um, two days away. NHL trade deadline hits 2 o'clock Central on Friday. Moves have already started around the the league. Just for full disclosure here, we're recording this shortly after 9 a.m. on Wednesday. Um, Let's start with this one. Zach Bogosian reportedly, and as Jesse pointed out before we hit record, this has not been announced officially yet, has agreed to a two-year, $2.5 million extension with the Wild. That does not include the old bugaboo, no trade protection. So he can be traded at some point, if indeed, because he's... 33, and if the Wild continues to struggle next year, it might make sense to trade him. But knowing what we know, start with Jesse. You are Bill Guerin sitting in the GM's chair today at the, I believe it's the Minneapolis cl- or, or the or the uh, St. Paul Club, yeah. where, where they are headquartered. You are Bill Guerin. You are in the GM's office. You are in the chair. What are you looking at doing today, knowing that your team is nine points out of a wild card spot? Um, and essentially, other than Nashville, does not have a game in hand on anybody. The last thing I'm looking to do is extend any players at this point. Like, it's not the time. Again, the timing is incredibly off. But it also is oddly and sadly enough fit Bill Guerin's M.O. as of late. Zach Bogosian, 33 years old. I mean, he played for the Atlanta Thrashers when the Atlanta Thrashers were still a thing. That's kind of how old he is. He's got, I think, nine points, one goal, and eight assists through 47 games. He's fine. He's I don't dislike him back there on the blue line, but I'm not looking to extend him necessarily, and I don't know what the reasoning is for this timing because, again, there's you have a little bit of money. I know we talked about it last week where, hey, we have a little bit of money to spend, but let's do it to sign another player instead. Let's Let's move forward on that. So if I'm Bill Guerin, I'm taking a real hard look at what my plan is because right now this doesn't make any sense. You know, you, you have some players that are 
vulnerable and that you can move. And I think Zach Bogosian was slightly on that list, but it wasn't on the list of mine to look at a two-year extension. I don't hate the two years. I don't hate the money necessarily. I hate the timing of it once again. There are other things that should have been priority over a Zach Bogosian extension. Uh, so right now, <clears throat> let's stay on the Bogosian thing for here for just a little bit. So right now, the Wild have Brodeen locked in through 2028. They have Bogosian locked in through 2026. They have obviously uh, Jared Spurgeon locked in through 2027. They have to obviously pay Brock Faber. Declan Chisholm, great name. Uh, he's probably going to get also another type of contract by the, by the summer. So we kind of know who the Wild's defensemen are for the next, like, basically three years. And if you're in Iowa, or if you're a defensive prospect and sure, you can always, you know, maybe move a Zach Bogosian who doesn't have, or has a modified no trade clause. I don't know if that kicked in no. with the new extension or not. Right. That's, no, that's free. Of no, it's out, which is good. Yep. But it just, it's, it's a weird log jam to me of, and the wild have always been really good defensively, but they've kind of like log jammed all their prospects chances of trying to earn an NHL spot because now they've also locked up a ton of defensemen <laughs> And giving contract extensions to guys like Zach Bogosian doesn't really fit that mo. So the whole thing to me is very, very confusing. Apologies, yes, that's, are, there's a dog okay? attacking me. I'm... Oh, the doggy! Let's let, let's see the dog. We love dogs on. Oh, I couldn't look goodness. at you, Jess, because I was like, it was like Cloverfield, and I was like, I'm gonna start puking <laughs> if I continue to look at Jesse. So I'm just gonna see just stare like, at the cat like, friendly going? screen. The kid hit her buzzer, and so she thinks that I have the buzzer and that she's oh. in trouble, and she's not. Oh, poor oh dog. no, no trouble. There's no, no trouble for the dog. The Apologies. Dog is, so the I dog missed a lot fine. of that. It's chaos uh just well, basically uh mo of the, or the, the the story of that jesse is stop <laughs> re-signing defensemen and blocking your other prospects if you're going to continue to have zach yes. bogosian on the roster right and is, is this an indication that they don't like their, their defensive prospects like true damon hunt's come up and played and i think there's something there but then they went out and got uh declan chisholm off waivers from the jets like is this uh is this an indictment of bill Guerin again ho holding on to an a veteran because he loves them or is this an indictment of what bill garen thinks of the young defenseman i think it's what he thinks of the young defenseman he's been drafting defensemen fairly high i mean he in those def prospects as you would mentioned judd have come in highly recruited again carson lambos is another guy like there's been these demon that i've wanted to see and we haven't and i've always been scratching my head like dakota mermis wasn't on that list of high-end prospects when he got first recalled right so it's been very curious. Unfortunately, I haven't paid nearly as enough attention in Iowa or at any of these other guys to really know and, and understand that. But yeah, I think that is a definitely an indication. He trusts Zach Bogosian. And again, Zach Bogosian's fine, in my opinion. He's whatever. I'm not upset about that necessarily. I'm upset about the timing, as I'd mentioned. But it does. It makes you wonder, are they going to have to look at getting better defensemen in, in the upcoming draft or in the next year, two years? And Jesse, Back to your point about Bogosian, too, is I think what concerns me is he fit, he fits this profile of guys that Bill Guerin just absolutely loves, you know? He loves the veteran, the gritty guy, and that's fine if you need that guy. And, 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 and those guys are great final pieces. Like, if you're a Stanley Cup team this time of year and you're like, we need to go get a locker room veteran guy that can, you know, that can play. Mm -hmm. um, the Wild has those guys in spades, but when you're trying to build something – it doesn't make a lot of sense to like build your team or a good decent part of, of, of your team on, you know, Ryan Hartman, Marcus Felino, Zach Bogosian, Freddie Goudreau. Like you can go down this entire list. I guess my question is, what's the end game here? Like, is the end game to try and mix these guys with the youngsters? It feels like you've got prospects that sh should be coming up. Um, it just feels like there is a, how can I put this nicely? There is a clog in the line that's going to stop guys from uh, who should be getting opportunities from playing because of these old standbys that you seem to like so, so much. And I'm not sure I I'm not sure that that's the most prudent thing for this franchise right now. Yeah, and that was the question that we had at the beginning of the year when they extended Felino and Hartman, right? It's like, well, what about Sammy Walker down there, or Adam Beckman, or any of yeah. these guys that had again been sold to us and had we you know seen glimpses of? Um, very rarely, I find, does it work to have such an old base with that young base, right? I think you look at what the Dallas Stars are doing and that's what they're doing. But they have Tyler Sagan being their old guys, right? They've got Pavelski. Like, it's a very different group. Like, certainly there are guys that are on the veteran status that have that elite skill and and not necessarily a complete knock to Felinos and whatnot, but it's that's not them. Like, so... 
that makes it even more puzzling. Like, why these guys? I understand the locker room importance, but it just seems like you are sacrificing skilled players to keep that locker room. And it just, I don't think that's the right way to do it either. What do you think, Dex? Yeah, this is the whole idea of extending all those guys in the summer is now you know, hurting you because now you can really only trade just a few guys and you could maybe still fetch uh, a few draft picks here and there. And we're going to probably get into that here as the trade deadline approaches in 48 hours. But in general, it, it's silly to just keep continuing to extend veteran guys when now you have them locked up and you also didn't get and you gave them the no movement clauses. It just it doesn't add up. It doesn't make much sense. OK, so before Friday, the, the Wild plays against the Coyotes on Thursday night. Then they travel to Colorado and play the Abs on Friday night, but the trade deadline hits at one o'clock Mountain Time, two o'clock our time on on Friday. Jesse, realistically, what are you looking to do uh, as far as moves before then? If you are the Wild, I mean, move somebody. Brandon Duhame has a number of interested teams. It sounds like, and if you can get a second round pick for Brandon Duhame, I love that. Right? Like I'll that's what's been projected. Town. Yeah, <laughs> I'll pick him up and run him there. I think you literally need to listen to whatever comes calling and make it make sense. You know, certainly you don't need to get a bag of pucks back, but I think that you are in the control seat, right? As Bill Guerin, with this team being where they are positioned, he has to, he gets to make the shots a little bit more, right? He gets to kind of say, yeah, you know what? Well, we want this because I know you really need this guy or I know you really want that. If people are looking at Philip Gustafson, you take a good hard look at that and say, you know what? Yeah, but I need this back or whatnot. I mean, there are different things that teams need at this point. The teams that are truly going to make the playoffs are looking to find that missing piece. And if the Minnesota Wild have to be kind of the bin that they go to, so be it. That's fine. Minnesota have made their bed and it's time for them to lie in it. And I think you do. You need to make it, again, make sense. I don't think Bill Guerin's a guy that's going to get fleeced on a trade by any stretch of the imagination. But be willing to say, yeah, you know, he's available. And if you're going to trade a goalie, do they just take a second or, I mean, I don't think they'll get a first round pick for either of these guys. Never know what's going to happen, though. Goalies are always needed at the trade deadline. Are you going to take another goalie back? Because if not, then you're calling up Wallstead, and now you're kind of accelerating his timeline, which I'm not completely opposed to at this point. But if you're going to trade one of those guys, do you get another goalie back in that can, you know, kind of be the stopgap uh, for obviously playing time this year, but also for Wallstead next season, too, to be kind of the 1A, 1B? So you can get draft picks back for the Duhames and maybe the Connor Dewars or whoever the heck you want. But if you trade a goalie, do you also get another goalie back? That's what I'm curious to see if they do. On Gus, first of all, um, I have serious reservations now. Unfortunately, as the guy that was on the Gus Plus trade, um, trade him bandwagon, I have serious questions now about what you can get back because he's been so bad at times of mm -hmm. late. And like his play, like I was all for trading him when it looked like, hey, he could help you win a game. I mean, we've seen games of late where it's like this guy just has no clue. So um, I I would say this though. First of all, I, I would trade Gus before Flurry because with Flurry, I think you're going to get almost nothing back at this point. Like I I wouldn't trade the flower for the sake of trading him unless somebody really wants him and it's going to give me more. I think for Gus, I'd be probably looking for like a, a third round pick. Like I'd love to get a second, but I don't think with with his play of late. But to Declan's question, I would be very comfortable after the deadline now giving Wallstedt a 20 game run here. And and the reason why I say that is he has been stuck in Iowa playing for a bottom feeding piece of crap team that's got like their defensemen are wiped out. They 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 had had to go get that kid from what Pittsburgh, right, Jesse? Yeah. <laughs> uh to get that guy from Pittsburgh who, who won a Hobie Baker back in in the day, not because not to help their team, but to help the Iowa team. So I think Wallstedt has seen enough work and it's not like he's playing in front of a good team uh, that I would love to, I would love to give him a look. See here. I also think that that Dallas game was such a terrible game and it wasn't his fault. Like that team was, it was a back to back, but more importantly, they were injured. They gave him no support. So I actually now wouldn't mind if you didn't get a goaltender back and went flurry and Wallstead. Here's another name I want to throw up throughout though. Um, and I got this, uh, I got this, message on Facebook on Sunday. I, I believe his last name is pronounced Carrier. David Carrier had a question and we've talked about this before, but he brought it back up and it's a good point. If you were Bill Guerin and like, you don't have a lot of guys that people are chomping at the bit, like do do would help you, but you're not going to break the bank to Jesse's point there. You're mm -hmm. going to get something back. Um, 
if somebody called you and said, Jake Middleton, who I believe has no protection, who is going on 30, who is nearing, I think he has one year left on his, his contract, so he doesn't necessarily fit in perfectly if you look at it from an age perspective. Jake Middleton, who I think could get you a really good return. Now, I do not expect Bill Guerin to do this because I'm sure he loves tarps off. But let's just say for a second, you disassociate yourself from tarps off, from the great guy, and it's just a business move. What would you need? Start with with Declan here. What would you need to trade him? Because he strikes me now as your as a blue chip commodity. And to our point here, because of the no trade clauses, you don't have a lot of blue chip trade guys. I mean, I, I, I would assume at the very least a couple like second round picks, but could you get a first? I mean, he's 28 years old. He's making next to nothing. Like $2.4 million is awesome. He signed through all of next season too. So he will probably get a big payday or is maybe in line to get extension talks for this summer with the wild or with another team. Uh, yeah, I would probably need at least, I mean, probably at least two like future second round picks or even a first round pick right now the wild don't have a third round pick in this year's draft they have both first and seconds over the next three drafts i mean despite all the wheeling and dealing bill Guerin has done over the last few deadlines he really hasn't mortgaged uh huge assets which is actually a, a testament to him that he's been able to buy without having to give up your biggest assets but i'd probably have to look to get back like early second round or first round picks if i was going to move jake middleton that is an interesting one, though. Like no one's, we haven't discussed that. That hasn't really been a point of discussion. But again, he might be one of the few guys that, if if a team comes calling and needs defensive help, that could be something you actually get a legit haul for. I want a pick for him and a pick for the mustache. So two picks <laughs> minimally. Um, yeah, I don't have any strong attachment. I, I've liked the way he's played. It's been very impressive. It's over exceeded my expectations. Um, but I would have no problem partying ways. I mean, this is a guy, again, who wasn't given a shot in San Jose. And, you know, the last overall pick, his draft year right before Connor McDavid. Um, again, love me some Midzi. Love his whole bit, his vibe, all of that. I could take or leave it. You're right. If somebody wants to offer something, and and I do, I think people would, would find his value. Minnesota Wild certainly scratched it and said, hey, look at what we found in, in the dirt here. Um, I have no qualms about separating. I'm, I'm just at the point, guys, where it's like, you know what? Right. <laughs> Show me the young guys. We go back to the Valstead thing. I was very adamant at the beginning of the year that I wanted to wait. I want to give him the time in Iowa. Like but now, I le- I, now I'm like, show show me what you got. You're got to be ready next year anyway. Show me yep. what you got for, I mean, give me all the young guys. That way it doesn't really look like you're tanking. You're just trying to build for the future. But you're really just kind of being like, eh, we're here. Exactly right. Well, and, and you don't need to dress this up then as a playoff race. Yeah. Like, like it's not like I, I would feel odd throwing a young goaltender into a you're two points back. And now it's like, OK, dude, we traded our goaltender, but we still think that we can make the playoffs. That would feel like a lot. But you're nine points back. You really should be. I, I mean, I consider tanking if, if we're going to apply that word, I consider that to be months ago. Yeah. Like, like, like tanking is the, the start with Dean. And that's like, screw it. We're, we're just not that good. Right. This is not tanking. This is a readjustment period mm-hmm. and, and just a, adjusting. And on Jake, I, I think that the contract, cause de, de, you know, Dex is exactly right. His contract right now is favorable as can be, but he's going to get a lot next contract. Do you want to yeah. be the team to pay that? And, and if you, you know, this would be Dex, I think, a bit like a baseball trade where you'd be giving a team Jake for the stretch run and all of next year. So like, if you're ever going to maximize his pay, yeah. his, his return, it's right now. Cause it's sort of, instead of one big bite at the apple, it's sort of a bite and a half and the half is a playoff race. Yeah. I, I don't know if they'd also maybe like want players back. Like, are they just looking for draft picks? Because, I mean, it, it's nice to have draft picks for sure, but it, it's hockey draft picks. These aren't football draft picks right. where you, you make a second-round pick and he's going to make an immediate impact with your team most likely in the next year. I wonder if they if they were to trade Middleton, if they were, would be willing to take maybe a lesser draft pick pack, let's call it like a third or a fourth, if they were able to maybe get a legit player back. I don't know if, I don't know if anyone's going to be obviously giving up like a middle six center for Jake Middleton per se, but I wonder if there's another team that would say, you know what, forget the draft picks. Or Bill Guerin just says, if you want him, we need something back that's actually going to help us now instead of just stashing up, you know, second round picks. Not to contradict my initial offer, but 
Yeah. That'd be the better path instead of just com- accumulating draft picks if the Wild do really want to be better next season. I mean, going back to what we were talking about with the defense and Zach Bogosian, would you require to get another defenseman back in that package? I mean, is that another option that you look at, right? You know, you're pretty, your depth is okay up front, but blue line, as we just talked about, has kind of been questionable. Like, where are we at with that? Would you require another defenseman maybe too? I think that might be another avenue to to explore. Now, granted, you wouldn't get a defenseman that's probably a top four pair back for him. It's not going to be a one for one in that sense. But, you know, somebody else that could maybe kick a John Merrill to the press box wouldn't be, wouldn't be terrible. How about a young defenseman with size, a prospect yeah. mm-hmm. in who, who you scouted? Like I would love I would love to g- give a team a ready-made playoff type defenseman for a guy who you, who you've developed but don't trust enough to play at. Yeah. Like like that's what I'm thinking. I I love that. Cuz like this is this again goes back to if you really aren't bringing up defensemen now cuz you don't think that they're that good, go get a guy that that you do like. And don't go get Kalen Addison, God bless him, who's five foot seven, who's five foot seven, and you think is good offensively, and then you won't play him. Go get guys. I mean, this team needs a lot of things. One thing that I am convinced, and they've never really gotten this. One thing that they need to do is improve their young size. Like you look at playoff teams, defensemen, those guys are are bleep kickers. Like they're big and they're bleep kickers. And Middleton's sort of like that. But he's, you know, he's getting towards 30. So I'm with you guys. If you could get a prospect defenseman who you like and have scouted, and 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 to Declan's point about this, not a draft pick, so it's not like a pie in the sky. It's an actual body uh, who who can who can probably help you starting next year. I think you got to consider it because Billy sort of painted himself. Well, not sort of. He's painted himself into a corner here. He has so little that he can move because of of the no trade clauses that at some point in time to improve this thing, I think you're probably going to have to make a trade that you don't love, but you can't be friends with everybody. One for one, Matt Dumba, Jake Middleton. <laughs> Stop. Did you see the hit on Bedard last <laughs> I night? Did. I did. That's what made me think yeah, of it. I was like, that, that was, was a heck of a hit. Yeah. That was great. Can we stop young players? Can you stop pulling up short of the boards and paying no attention? Someone's going to get re- hurt really bad here. This mm-hmm. is not, this is not junior hockey. I mean, my God, this is the NHL. These are men. Be prepared. I've never seen so many young guys get thrown in into someone's going to break their neck. I'm afraid. That's what right. really worries me. Yeah, really worries me, and that should not be the case. I well, I, I I can't guarantee it'll prevent breaking necks, but instead of uh, you know, having some brain fog, how about you have some AG one? All right, from our friends at Athletic Greens, it helps manage stress. You help recover from stress and stress and mental clarity with alertness of one scoop from AG one, which covers nutritional gaps too and supports gut health. So if you're worried about getting those nutrition. Uh, supplements or you don't know what to do with your gut health and you just have that brain fog try ag1 you can get a free one-year supply of the vitamin d3k2 and five free ag1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at ag1.com slash jhs that's drink ag1.com slash jhs beautiful uh just it was i, I found it to, i guess the word's intriguing the Wild played on Sunday. They came back and won. It was the Sharks. It was not that impressive. But they then decided to not practice Monday, Tuesday. We're recording this on Wednesday. They're going to practice this afternoon. Any theories about two days of practice being off this time of year? Like one for sure. Um, I really thought that they'd practice on Tuesday, though. Do you, do you sense that this is done for a reason or just for pure rest reasons? I mean, there has been a lot of conspiracy theories floating around. I've certainly heard them like, oh, they're getting ready to make a big trade. Like, I don't know. (laughs) Monday, not having practice made sense. They're on a back-to-back, right? It's give them the day off. Tuesday was puzzling. um, But they're back at it today, and they actually bumped practice up a half an hour because they do have a travel day. So typically, they practice at 11. Today is 1030 because they have to catch their flight out to Arizona. So I think bumping it up a half hour bodes well saying that they're actually going to look at at working the team but as far as them canceling it i don't know maybe john hines is as soft as dean evson was and doesn't find a wow. value in practice I, I don't know right like i just don't know wow calling out the coach all right final thing uh we, we've talked about what we think uh we'd like to see transpire two o'clock on friday has bill Guerin made trades and do you think jesse that he has done 
anything major or if he does, do you think it's minor? I think he'll do something minor. I don't I feel like he's a little gun shy to do anything big. I think I just get that sense. Usually he's not. So I hope he proves me wrong. I hope I'm wrong about this, but I feel like it's going to be something very minor. All year we've seen little minor things and, you know, this and that and I just I think you'll see Brandon Duhame likely moved and I think that'll be about it. So all the speculation will be worth it, but I don't see anything major happening. And it will it make the team better is my big question. I think not immediately. He's not going to make a move that's going to be an immediate impact on the team. It'll be something for whether it's a pick or whether it's a prospect, something down the line. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think he'll make some type of moves. Uh, I, I, I don't know if it's trading a goaltender, but with them being nine points out, you have to. You have to at least look at the situation and understand that, look, we're not going to be big buyers and we're not going to be able to really probably do enough from an external standpoint to make our team better. So at that point, you're going to have to trade off some assets. So yes, I, I do see Bill Guerin selling off some pieces of his roster by by Friday's deadline. I'm going with two moves. Duhame's gone, which makes sense. Um, and, and he could be great as a bottom six guy on a playoff team, I, I think, because he's so scrappy, good playoff player. Uh, so I think he's gone, and then I think we get another move of some sort. I, yeah, I think it's a goaltender. I mean, could, could he surprise us with a move that we don't see coming, i.e., a guy like Jake, yeah, I don't think he will. It's not really in Bill's DNA to do that. Uh, but I do think that we get a secondary move. Uh, and just for fun, I personally buy out Marcus Johansson and pay the freight on that contract as quick as I can because I don't want him around my team anymore. The whirling dervish has had his run. I'm so tired of it. Anyway. One sorry, question. Did you guys heard that Matt Zuccarello to New York has been a thing? Because some people have asked me that too, and I haven't even seen that speculation. But have oh. Right? Hmm. We're curious. So have you seen this or just been somebody told had asked what is there any truth to the rumors for Zuki to New York? And I was I hadn't seen anything oh, of the oh, sort. I, I would say probably not. I mean, I know New York absolutely loves him. It makes perfect I, sense. Yeah, I just I don't see that happening though. They're Zuki really... wouldn't have been so eager to jump on that contract extension, I would imagine. But things, you know, things haven't gone great. It's interesting that he the Sunday, the fact the that personal, he, that's where the, people, I think the conspiracy yeah. theorists came out. Well, too. then John Hines is like, oh, look, he's fine. That which, which I don't doubt he is fine. That's very interesting. He, you know what? Him going back to a Rangers team that's got Stanley Cup aspirations to hang with, with his buddy, the King, who owns the city. Yeah, I love that. That is reckless speculation at its height, but that is great, Jesse Pierce. <laughs> I can't take credit. I had never heard it. I was like, I just didn't know if anybody else I was missing out. And it came from a comment on our episode this week. So I was just like, hmm, I did not hope I wasn't aware of that. Very intriguing. Go Zephs. There you go. There you go. All right. We will uh, be back. Uh, well, well, we'll be back with a full strength show a week from today, but I'm sure that we'll also be doing a show on Friday when the deadline does uh, pass, especially if the wild does something. We'll talk to you later. It's Judd's Hockey Show.